Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Welcome to another edition of Curry Cafe. My name is Ray Gary, and we are here in Brookings, uh, the Curry Cafe, discussing just about whatever comes up. And today, we're going to be discussing why is the country so divided? Now, we may not be able to fill the whole hour with this, so at the at the end of us solving it in the first 10 minutes or so, well, I don't know what we'll talk about. But anyway, we'll start out today by going around the table and having everybody introduce themselves. I'm Billy Futurici, and I am a KCIW host and produ- producer of my own show. And I am Rick McNamer, volunteer and board member. And to my left is our special guest. I'm Mike Greer, a candidate for state assembly for the state of California from Santa Rosa to the Oregon border and a school board member in Del Norte County. Okay. Uh, what we're talking about today is why is our country so divided and the division is primarily uh, uh, political. You know, in the past, it's been other things as well, but then some of the other things also go into the political part. So it used to be that if you were a Republican or a Democrat, you could still go to dinner, but it doesn't really happen much anymore, I don't think. Um, it's the uh, the belief in your system is rabid, and you can't see anything different. And you wonder, how did this come about? Well, some of the some of the ways it came about, of course, was social media. When I can go on the computer and send a message that's absolutely, totally nonsense, and somebody picks it up and says, "Oh, that's gospel." As an example, we have a, th- a thing here called um, community member or something like, and it's it's a very it's not Facebook, but it's a thing where people can put messages, and it's kind of designed for does anybody know where I can get a good plumber? or something like that. And and lately it's turned very political. And a few months ago, and this was the same week that Fox was um, fined, not fined, but had to pay a three quarters of a billion dollar uh, settlement for lying. Not, not making a mistake, not doing something wrong, flat ass lying, and they couldn't even put their people on on the trial to, to defend it. So that same week uh, on this good neighbor thing, uh, somebody writes, well, if you want to know what's really going on on the border, uh, check with Fox News. So I would think that somebody who just paid that kind of a, a settlement for lying wouldn't be the place you'd go. And Fox News did not, they probably gained listeners or watchers or whatever. Can I just t- uh, tag a tie on what you're saying? About lying, uh, the the networks. I think many of the many of the mainstream media, the twenty four or seven, are entertainment networks. They're, exactly. they're really not yeah. news anymore. In fact, I heard somebody on Fox say, "It's okay to lie. I lie all the time. That's part of my job." I I can't remember who it was. It may have been Tucker, but I don't quite remember who. But the basic idea is that they are not under oath when they are. When they're talking on their station, they're, the main idea is to get audience. They just want the ratings. Rush Limbaugh did the same thing. Yeah, every he, now and then, did, about yeah. every six or eight months or a year, Rush would quite intensely say something that was so outrageous that he made national news. And oh, General Motors was dropping him, and this was dropping him, and everybody was dropping him. But he probably increased five million listeners by the people who had never even heard of them. And of course, those, all those advertisers came back again because it was just too lucrative. And you mentioned Tucker Carlson. He had to be something. He had to be entertainment. He certainly was not news. Um, but he was also their top person. Well, if I may ask Mike uh, a question. No. To start out. We don't want to <laughs> let him talk. <laughs> and again, I want to thank Mike's the first uh, GOP Republican that has accepted our invitation. Yes. And we really and appreciate that. I've been trying for about six years. Yeah. Turned down a lot. But anyway, 
um, along with the sort of political divisiveness and how we might be able to get along or change. I don't know. Well, Mike, you represent, or you are going to try to represent a district with a lot of blue in it. Is that correct? So what's your opinion on, are there issues out there that you think we can kind of come together on right off the top? I think as you look at what's happening in the country right now, you're going to find that you have on both ends of the spectrum, just like you have in the media, both sides uh, aren't really giving the people the information that uh, we used to get. I don't care whether it's a Democrat, whether it's a CNN, I don't care whether it's Fox, you're not getting all of that. Mm -hmm. And as I look at what's happening, as I knock on doors, because I do a lot of door knocking, um, even in this highly blue area that I have, it's like 51% Democrat, 22% Republican. Wow. Oh, I didn't know but, that, Steve. Yes, it is. And most of it is because of down in the Santa Rosa area. And does down in Sonoma County. Uh, but what I have found is that people in the middle want to discuss what's happening now. And that's why even in campaigning, I'm not running as a Republican. You know, I'm not doing a Republican Democrat. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at quality of life. What's our life like? And do we have the freedom to attain those goals that we want to have, that type of happiness that we all deserve? And that's the kind of campaign I'm having. With it is that very thing, but we see a lot of you know people going back and forth on it, uh, arguing. Um, good example is you take a look at some of the down at Cal Poly Humboldt, yeah. where they have just now decided they, they might not even have a commencement because of the protesters that are on campus. That's a shame. And they're not allowing any students to go ahead and go to classes. They're canceling everything because you have a few hundred students that have stopped the education of all the other students. And I, I, let me comment on that, too, because I actually saw a program that I watch all the time called Headline Humboldt for the P. I don't know if you're familiar, I'm familiar with that. familiar with it. Okay. And they showed exactly that. I, I mean, protesting, we, it, it all. I don't know if it started in, that's why I think of about the 60s and all of that turbulent stuff. It was way before then. There's been protests back to well, okay. World War I. Yeah, yeah, I guess in yeah, this is modern day protests, you yeah. say that. But anyway, yeah, they showed video. The, the protesters were in there battling the police, hitting, trying to hit the police. I just think if you're going to, that kind of protest it, it bothers me. Let me just say that. I think that if you disrupt uh, classes like that, uh, it, Protesting, if you're going to stop a major, uh, be on a major highway where people are trying to conduct business, maybe going to a doctor's appointment, going to the uh, politicians, if you will, their homes, or if they're out to, I just think those are kind of uh, deal breakers to me. I, I agree on the on the going to the homes. I don't think that should happen, or you shouldn't be giving out politicians home phone numbers or things like that. But I grew up in New York, and and when we protested, it was protesting. If if the uh, if the people who operated the bridges, the drawbridges, went on strike, four o'clock they opened the bridges and went home. That's you know that's the kind of protest we did, and we we were not fooling around protesters. Uh, but if it's something you feel as strongly about as these people do, and I can certainly understand why they do, you got you got to make a big stink. You can't just walk around with a sign. You have to get attention, and that's. Uh, that's what that's what they're trying to do, and by being as nasty as possible. Well, and, and that's one of the problems. That's why we have the the different ends of the people, all the people going against each other, or because of situations like that. I believe in you know legal protest, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I don't believe in the violence. I don't believe in you know coming out and telling everybody that to, you know we're going to kill everybody, you know, and blocking people of. All different religions, different races, whatever, right. from going to class. That's not the type of protest. And I think what's happening, in fact, I'll be coming out with a major statement here within the next day mm. that basically says, you're losing people. You're losing those people that might support you because of what you're doing. You, 200 students stopping a thousand kids from graduating after putting all that time into it. And, and I have I have I a problem with that. Excuse me. They're still going to graduate. They just won't be a commencement exercise, right? 
Well, you know, they can graduate, but if you spent five years going through school or six years, which like a lot of them do, yeah, and they want to go across that and their parents who paid for it, of course, nowadays we have so much that the parents don't have to pay for, you know, they want to see that too. You want to have that height. It's just like going through high school graduation. I mean, now, you know, you get preschool kids graduating. <laughs> I know. Oh, I've been here. You, right you have all those. Well, You're those talking to somebody who, who didn't I go to those high school graduations. I don't go to those. You know? <laughs> no, well, I did. Just to me, I don't yeah. go to those graduations. I know. But it's something that's there that should be there. USC has canceled their graduation. You got a lot of, you know, feedback on that. You got major companies uh, pulling out of Columbia because of the things are going on. Because I don't think that it's being handled right. And the protesters are not just a group of people, it's highly organized. Um, and I think what needs to be done is state your point. Don't threaten other people. Don't stop them from doing their daily lives. But, the, but the, they're protesting the fact that uh, their people are in a lot of trouble and, and are being uh, killed, bombed, all sorts of things babies. Uh, there's there's lots of bad stuff on the other side. I, not This is not unlike Vietnam. I, I not, No, yeah. not a lot of this. And I understand uh, completely what you're saying, but the fact is I haven't heard the Jewish people come out and say we're going to commit genocide against the Palestinians. They don't say it. They just it's do just it. the opposite. They're <laughs> the ones that want to do genocide against Israel and the Jewish people. And you know it's interesting because this uh, this conflict uh, it's it's a microcosm of the macrocosm across the world. People who believe that they're better than somebody else are always in a conflict. And one of the problems I see happening is that um, I mean I am not going to envision that happening in our country. But if if we can't learn to talk reasonably and listen to our own voice of reason and be able to allow somebody to speak their mind without radically attacking them. That A, a friend of mine wrote a book, and I'm just going to call this out because Lisa, Lisa Swall is her name, and she started a nonprofit called um, Crossing Party Lines, and she wrote this textbook called Yes, You Can Talk Politics. It has really good exercises in here about the basics of the brain and how if we grow up or if we listen to radical views too much, we will we will proliferate radical views. If we listen to our voice of reason, we will proliferate the voice of reason. So and that's true. One of my things is that I will never tear an individual down to make me bigger yeah, or taller yeah, or yeah. stronger. Mm -hmm. That's not how it happens. It happens from within, not by tearing other people I've, down. I've exactly. had it happen to me, and I, it's not it's not good. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but, and let me say again, uh, I, in uh, defense of Mike, don't really have to defend him, but I get the triplicate, um, mm -hmm. and I read Kevin Hendricks, who's the good, Demo good friend of mine. Uh, well, oh. perfect because he mentioned you in the last article, as you are one of the ones that he seems to can talk to without getting crazy. And that's where we're at right now, I think, in a lot too many mm -hmm. too many crazies on going yelling at each other. But I just wanted to give you that little bit of credit, I too. It was, it was good to read that, and I thought, oh, well, it's even better he's going to be here this weekend. Kevin and I talked on a Friday at the Economic Summit, actually, about the article. Okay. Um, particularly about the part that he said that I believed that I couldn't win. Oh, and okay. I told him, you know, that's not really what I believe. I wouldn't be running and putting my own money into my campaign if I didn't think I could win. Right. So I've actually addressed that in a letter to the triplicate that you'll be able to read next week. Well, I'll look forward to that. Yeah. That's okay. Kevin and I get along really well. He's a, yeah, I've been, and you had, have to. You, you on the school board, we have both Democrats and Republicans. Okay, you need to have different people because not everybody has the same ideas. Whether you're Republican. You're not going to have all the right ideas. Democrats, you're not going to have all yeah, the right ideas. Exactly. Let's get together and decide and discuss it. And that's what's the problem with the protests is that they're stopping it. A lot of the places you can no longer have that civil discourse on university campuses. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I, like I said, I, I admit when I saw that, I 
I don't get sympathy for the, that group of protesters. Let me just say that. That's just how I, uh, but I viscerally felt. I thought, I, I, how can I support that? At the same time, what Israel is doing, and that's how I'll focus out on the Netanyahu mm-hmm. part of that, uh, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's gotten way out of control. What's what's the sense of all that uh, mindless, senseless bombing and killing? Mm. But uh, anyway, that's when I saw well, the, the, the protesters, it just the, didn't uh, register with me. But that's you can what, see where they're coming from. I mean. Yes, I can. But um, but again, it's hard for me to sympathize with people that are acting. It was a bit violent. It, from well, what I saw. Yeah, and, it, and it's not as violent here as it has been on the East Coast. It's been even more violent. Uh, I'll be right up front with you. I actually authored a letter uh, that condemned the Hamas attack on Israel, mm-hmm. that I condemned it. I didn't condemn the Palestinian people. Right. Because most of that is not it. And I think that's what you're going to find. There's a difference, I mean, yes. It's just like in the United States. Yeah. I don't like the idea that old men get to send young men to war. Yeah. I've never agreed with that. Okay. (laughs) And so I think it's the same thing is happening, is that the Palestinians are being grouped with Hamas, and Hamas wants it that way. And now as these protesters are starting to say, yes, we are Hamas. That's a problem. Well, I I hadn't heard that. And if they're saying that, that is very disturbing, because Hamas is the radical terrorist uh, organization. They're not the Palestinian people. Yeah, they and they, had they were note. put in charge of Palestine by who? Netanyahu. They, so. they had to know that what they've started is exactly what was going to happen. You, yeah. You don't mess with yeah. Israel because you know you're going to get mm-hmm. you're going to get. Yeah, it was like a bad hard thing. twice as um, hard. Yeah. Um. So uh, <laughs> we could go on with that issue. That's that's huge. That's a world mm-hmm. issue. That's. I, I wrote down a couple others that I thought maybe these are the where Republicans and Democrats, I think, feel uh, that they want to tackle in different ways. Um, the economy and jobs, biggie. Each one, each one, by the way, is claiming they're doing a better job than the other one was. Well, again, and then we, as uh, the hoi polloi, whatever you want to call us, we have to figure all that out. Yes. But it's pretty crazy. And again, I put terrorism, and I included both world terrorism and uh, the terrorism we Do- have. Domestic. Our, domestic, thank you, domestic terrorism. And then uh, health care. I think, aren't we all, we're all concerned about all of these issues. I'm sure we have different methods of attacking them or going after them. But does that sound about right to you, Mike, with the, with the Republican? I, I think there's a, a few more things on there, too. Edu- oh, I, well, education yeah, is a big one. Huge. Yeah, right now. True. And as an educator, I look at it and see what's going on. And I find that throughout, you know, Northern California and my travels is that there are a couple different issues. One is education and the parents' right with the school boards to to protest that they're not being able to do. Okay. Um, And a lot of people talk about book banning. Book Mm. banning... I will never ever support. No. Thank you. Ever? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, do I believe in appropriate books? You know, depending on the student? Absolutely. Okay. But there also has to be a way that, okay, the student really wants to do it. Well, maybe the parent can sign something for the student to be able to read that book. But they've been doing that for years. Yeah. yeah. Well well that's it. But now it's it's changed a lot. Well, a lot what about better. what about what about the idea and and uh that um they have in Florida? Which I, I somehow can't help but believe that this is being done to further this guy's name or something, where he's, he can't talk about slavery and things like that because we don't want to make the white kids feel bad that 200 years ago. So they were, as a teacher, washing history. Why, yeah, why, why, are we, why are we covering that? You know, in we Germany, they be. do just the opposite. Let's, let's they, teach, teach it. They, well, yes. That's just what I they do. Agree, they but, teach about the but, Nazi movement. They okay. Don't, okay. The big thing right now is you hear CRT, okay? Uh, how are you teaching the critical race theory? Okay. But that's okay. not being taught CRT. in the lower level. And you're, you're hearing that. In it's California, not, we don't have CRT. They don't in We have ethnic either. studies, and there's actually a curriculum you can look at. It, and and it's part a, of it's that a, curriculum 
is very just vicive. And but so that curriculum is designed for law students in mm-hmm. graduate school. That's not something Have they just take the CRT school. on to regular uh, race training? No, criti- no, no. Critical race theory is a theory by which you begin to look at the history in depth. And just like you're approaching a novel, you know, I'm teaching a novel, I want to get in depth and do a critical analysis of that novel. That's what critical race theory is. It's studying history in a critical depth. That, that, that's the definition of it, but it's not the reality. Okay, and I believe in reality I don't and know. see what has been taught and what it is. You can actually get on um, in California and get on the website. And there's a curriculum. As you go down through that curriculum, there are certain sections I question on it. Now, one of the things that I was, I was a California Teachers Association union president in over a five-county area for it. And as people know, it is on the, you know, getting to be further and further on the left. Mm -hmm. But as a Republican, I was able to talk with them and do those things that need to be done. With it, and the social justice is becoming a big thing in education. They don't want to see all of this. Do we need to teach the true history? Absolutely. Yes. There is no For question sure. about it. I'm in the process right now as a school board member in Del Norte. We're going to be renaming uh, a school down in Klamath, which happens to be my district that I represent, uh, Margaret Keating School. We are changing the name of that school and hopefully be able to make it into a cultural and environment school down in Klamath. Because 75% of the students there are Native American, and the school's on reservation land. Right. Mm. Let's change that. Let's go ahead. So we're going to, you know, looking at different names right now to go ahead and change it. So by the beginning of the year, we'll be able to do that. That's commendable. Because you need to teach the culture. Good or bad needs to be taught. Absolutely. And The only way you maintain pride in the culture. Yeah. And it's the only way you can avoid having historical catastrophes happening again. Exactly. It, if yeah. Only if you teach that history and the it cultural does. of that history. It does. Yeah. Um, yep. I was talking to a tribal member yesterday down at the grand opening of the new um, tribal gas station, Fuel Mart, down in uh, oh. Birch Track, down mm. at Belt Creek Casino. Oh, okay. Okay, mm. so I was talking to okay. one of the leaders for the tribes, and we were talking this very thing about culture. Mm. And what you're talking mm. about, Rick. And I says, you know, I understand that. Yeah. And one of the reasons I do is just, I'm a Mormon, belonging to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And as I look at the history of our church, how we're driven, you know, from New York to, yeah. you know, Ohio to Illinois, you know, and finally out to Utah. Okay. Yeah. And so I understand some of that. Do I stand the same that, you know, it's the same thing that happened, you know, to the Native Americans, but not on the same degree with it. So but I understand good, the importance of culture. It's and a good we parallel. need to do that. And that I is have a good parallel. No problem. Yeah. I think education should teach that. Yeah. And not try to ban it. You know, there's going to be good and bad. And it's that simple. Well, and you need to teach them both. Yeah. And back to the CRT, that that's kind of got bastardized, if you will, over the. It, yeah. They, that's, they, they, they've really that's, taken that to me to the extreme. Like they, they don't want to teach any of that. Uh, Culture, if you will. Well, you and have by to, the you way, have I to did... teach so that a lot of the slaves learned a uh, learned a career that they could oh, use after well, slavery. Yeah, they're blacksmiths, go. and yeah, you know. and and yeah, K through twelve, especially education, is what I had also. That that's a big deal. It's huge. one of the uh, very important issues. So, how do private schools come into that? I mean, if you want to send your child to a private school, that's certainly your right. But should now K through twelve if I'm right, is pretty much funded through the government a it, lot. Public Absolutely. schools. We're, okay. Yeah, we're okay. government employees. But yeah. should uh-huh. um, should private schools be uh, partly funded by no. the government? Would that be like, like uh, I, vouchers? I would say no. That well, that, I would say no, too, but I might, you might have a different if opinion. If private schools are funded by the government, they have to abide by public school law. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And, so there, and each That's... state, the, the laws in Oregon or Washington are different from California. Oh. So there's all different variations um, of what how things need to be done. 
because education is my number one platform in my campaign. Well, that's huge. Okay. So tell me then, Mike, how I, I didn't realize that some private schools could be funded by the government. I had no idea. I thought private meant private because the parents pay. Yeah. Now, so what? A lot of people will take a look at charter schools mm -hmm. and private schools and consider them the same thing. No, and they are not. No, they're different. Okay. A charter school is a public school. Yeah, that's right. You know, and they do get funded by the government. Should they have to do the same things that the public schools do? Yes, they should. And those laws apply to them. There's a lot of different things. When I was in Paradise, we had five charter schools in our small district. Wow, okay. that's amazing. Well, we had five. But I, I am for school choice, whether it's charter or whatever. And the reason I am, I like competition. If somebody has found a better way to teach our students so that they can learn, well, maybe we should copy that and put it into our own system so that the students benefit. We actually saw charter school kids come back to our district because that's what we started to do. What is it that makes people choose that? Okay, why did they choose homeschooling? California lost over 400,000 kids. They didn't know what happened to them. A lot of those went to homeschooling. It's huge because they don't like the safety that is not there. Uh, Santa Rosa in the high school, they had a student killed in an art class, knifed. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so you see a lot of these issues going on with parents. So that's why you're seeing a lot of that. Uh, and so there are different restrictions for charter schools. Uh, again, according to state, it's different. It's just like teachers' unions are different. Mm -hmm. Whereas our teachers' union is very localized. It's Del Norte Teachers Association. You get up to, say, Oregon and Washington, especially Washington, the teachers are paid by the state. In California, they're paid by the district. That's right. Okay, and that makes a big difference. Because what happens is you have all this union organizing and union problems because you're always fighting over money and health benefits. In these other states, you don't have that locally because it's on a statewide basis. And to, so there's a difference in different states. I remember when I was teaching in Colorado, we had site-based management. Every school was just like a little insular government all in their own. Uh, and, and our charter schools were set up like one was an art school focus, one was dance focus, one was theater focus. We had a lot of charter schools in they, Denver. They do. Charter schools have that ability mm -hmm. to do it and that they can focus on it. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought that maybe our uh, other public schools should have that same ability. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. it's a good... And they need to take a look at some of that. Why is it? And do it. But not right now, the biggest issue I see with the schools is the safety issues. And discipline. It's, yeah. And discipline. Uh, for instance, right now, when we were growing up, uh, a teacher in third grade can say, well, you know what? You don't get any recess because you didn't do your work. But as soon as you finish your work, you can go to recess. Mm -hmm. There's a state law in California that says you can't do that. Oh, my God. You automatically go whether you finish it or not. Oh, mm -hmm. see, that's undermining education. That's undermining the teacher. Well, what has happened in the last six years is that that local control for education is being taken away. Yeah. Okay, it's taken away from the elected school board officials, and the state is passing statewide laws without paying, giving us the money even to take care of it. They're mandating certain things, not giving us the money to do those things. And so there's a lot of things like that that's happening. That's and that's one of the things that we need to do is get that local control. So well, you're talking now probably about things that I don't imagine causes divides. Oh, I Which is it. what we're here for, to, well, to find out why uh, I don't even want to have you in my house because you're a Republican type. Well, I know, but... If Think that's about hard. the divide that's caused uh, in, within the school itself. I think it is sort of on track with that well, topic. Uh, not, maybe not political per se. It is. But it is. I was just in Santa Rosa at a school board meeting. I go to school board meetings wherever I go. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of exactly what you're talking about between those that would like to see uh, school resource officers in schools to help with safety and those that don't. Uh, and they were down there and they're protesting. So there's a lot of it, but it depends on location. 
Well, that, so you see a, a lot of stuff like that, and people don't go together. They won't come together and discuss it. Okay, they just get on one side, and people get on the other side, and they don't sit down and say, well, what is a solution then? It seems like you have uh, nationally now one, one side that is uh, more or less promoting discord by throwing out sometimes ridiculous things. Um, I think we can, we're, we're, all, we're so used to Trump saying ridiculous things that we don't pay attention to them much, but I mean, this man quotes Hitler on a regular basis. His favorite leaders in the world are strong leaders like Putin and uh, China and North Korea and all this stuff. Yeah. In, in other words, what he's saying is, I'm going to be a strong leader like that. And he has already said we need to revisit the Constitution. So a lot of that is, is stuff that he says to, to, to uh, attract his base, I guess. Uh, but then he does things like the Gettysburg Address thing he did the other day. I'm sure you must have seen that. Uh, I've seen a lot of it. I've seen a lot of it taken out of context on the left. Well, this wasn't taken Quite out frankly, of context. I've seen He's... a lot of things. And when you talk about the Republicans throwing things out, um, I, it's the same thing is happening on both ends. Both ends of the... Whether it's Democrat or whether it's Republican, they're throwing it out. The people are caught in the middle, okay? And that's one of the reasons that there is a lot of discourse because the people in the middle don't know what side to go to because of the things thrown out by the Democrat Party that aren't true, things thrown out by the far-right Republicans that aren't true, and so the people don't know what to do. But this was something, the the Gettysburg thing was... Too many times... We concentrate just on what we believe and don't want to talk to anybody else it. because your view is where it is and my view is where it is but that and is they what, won't come together. The, the, that's the, why I'm going to win my election is because I'm bringing these people together. Those, well, those views come about by people doing things. I or mean, not you, doing things. Or not, or not doing, doing things, yes. exactly. Yeah. It's not at all uncommon for Trump to do something he did in this Gettysburg Address. He talked about, oh, it was a horrible battle, and it was this and that, and and um, and there were a lot of blood and a lot of the, but in some ways it was kind of beautiful too. And then he's talking about Lee, who have you noticed is no longer in favor, um, telling them, you can't fight uphill, lads. You can't. Fi- just ridiculous stuff that he was making up off the top of his head, which he does frequently, that make no sense. It's kind of like President Biden. No, <laughs> what he he's never done anything even close to being that. eaten by cannibals. Or what? Now, well, what was that? Well, that's a plausible he, story. He, yeah, oh, he, he <laughs> said well, that his uncle was eaten by cannibals. Oh, I, 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 I wait a minute. Too, wait, now you talk about taking out of context. His <laughs> uncle was a pilot in World War II crash landed in an island that was inhabited by cannibals and his body was never found. Well, I, and he I, doesn't I, say he was, he said it's possible that he was. But, I mean, See, you got, is, you got that story that is, from Fox News, this obviously. Is where, you know, we're we're going to be disagreeing on some of this, and this is why we need this type of discussion. It's it's a, exactly. Why are we going ahead? You know, you're taking, I can take what Biden says and give my impression. You can do what Trump says. But the fact of the matter is, we need to decide what can we talk about that brings people together? That's what and we're... What I, what I wanted to comment about those two particular stories, that they're antidotal stories that are have nothing to do with each other. They're apples and oranges. It's like... Or they're bosses. Well, that's, Trump is famous for that. Well, but but what the whole idea is that why bring up stories in a, in a conversation? I mean, I'm not questioning why. I'm just throwing this idea out that... That if we're going to have anecdotal stories about some particular personality or the other, that's not the broad politics. No, that's personalities not personalities right. are not the broad politics. Yeah, that's not what what changes people's mind stories about cannibals. No. And my but when talk- you but when you when, when you literally quote Hitler, that changes well, people's minds and that's not oh, I, I that's not it's anecdotal, just- it's not fun, it's not anything. I think what it does is it just gives those people permission to to uh, feel the way they have always felt and say, yes, I'm vindicated because I hear it from some and, other person. And, and it also uh, influences people who don't have an opinion or don't know anything about it. When I say that he quoted Hitler, a lot of people don't know what I'm talking about. Well, that's because they haven't been exactly. paying attention. 
I think noticing what's going on in the world is is a good idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Mike, you you talked about the the middle. I, I I don't too I don't see a middle anymore. I was writing down. Well, I used to think about a third party. I thought, well, I might go to a third party, but there's been no viable third parties to me that would actually make a difference. Okay, so not such I, Perot. Yeah, not. Yeah, and yeah. I was really a big Perot fan, but that's okay. But but he had a viable th- third. Oh, I, I agreed, or I agree. And then the, you know, so the independents and the moderates, where are they? I don't still think there are too many out there anymore. I thought I could remain one, but I'll be honest. I have to say, <laughs> the Trump presidency kind of threw me off of that. Um, but where I thought the big division started happening, this is my own opinion, is when Reagan made a pact, I thought a pact, with Jerry Falwell, the Christ, I thought kind of the Christian nationalist of his day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then that's when the church and the state and the religion became a big part of uh, the Republican government. That's when I stopped being a Republican, by the way. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so any Tennessee, but th- that was the beginning. But I thought Trump was the definite icing on the cake and the gasoline on the fire. <laughs> but um, so anyway, but back to, and that goes back to education, church and state. There, It seems to me they're trying to sneak some religion into schools at times, even posting the Ten Commandments. Now, I'm, I'm throwing that one out there. Let me just say this. Some schools Back are. to where you were talking about let's teach about culture. I think we should teach about religion, teach about it. There's, religion is a, bit, a, big part of, ugh, a big part of this country. If they had just Teaching about it, that's one thing, but don't promote any certain religion. The, and I don't disagree with that at all. Okay. Uh, but it all needs to be taught because it's all part of the culture. Mm-hmm. Well, it, yes. Is, yes. I believe it that. needs to be it that. Is. I get but, a lot of- but you're saying you're starting to see some of these come in. But what you're seeing also is the other radical side come in, where in Oakland, they have a big issue in education down there, and the parents are really upset because all the teachers went there and told all their third through sixth graders that um, the Palestinians are, you know, being harmed for, you know, that they need to go and get rid of the Jews, you know, and Israel. And they taught these in school. So they're bringing those political philosophies into school. Who, who is and it was that? actually brought out at the Oakland School District. And there's actually some other cases going on. What with that. teacher, how, where did that come from? Where did, who? Because there was a, a group of, um, radical? <laughs> I, I'll say radicals, far left, were teachers uh, that wanted to do it. And it's really interesting because when they started doing it, I found out that California Teachers Association, one of their conferences, where the Palestinians came out was coming up against everything, but yet, whereas a lot of the Hamas and so forth, they don't believe with you know, LGBTQT stuff. And so they actually got in arguments. said, mm-hmm. you're supporting this. Because, but you know, look what they do to us. Look how they treat women. Look how they do all these things. And so, because of this type of thing, you're seeing a lot of different things happening in education. Interesting. And I, and and I spend a lot of time going over education, even now. I do a lot of it. I still, I've lobbied both in Washington, D.C., and in Sacramento for education, so forth. So, I see what's happening. But you're getting both sides. You're getting a little bit. And I think it's, in reaction to everything else that's coming in. Oh, now, I'm sure. Do it's I believe reaction. in the Ten Commandments? I believe in those commandments as a way of society. Maybe this is how you should treat other people. Well, I'm okay. all okay. looking at it that way. But does that mean I'm going to teach each one individually? No, those principles of what we every need to teach. religion should, in the world. Should they be in public spaces, though, um, like a school not or well, a court? Not, what happens not if posted. you change the order, change the wording? They're already there. They're already there. They're already Ex- in there. You're talking I about mean, the schools. Yeah. They're talking about respect. Yes. They're talking about kindness. They're talking about those things. It's just different wording. Every wait, 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 Every, I, I'm I'm not a religion expert, but is no, there, but every religion, is there one uh, about honoring your mother and father or something? But like every that? religion Absolutely. in the world has That's those respect. tenets Canons. of good behavior. Suppose uh, the the fellow who wrote that book about uh, do what you're taught in kindergarten has those same tenets of be kind to each other. Agreed. Okay. It's a religious document, a religious th- th- thought, and it should not be in the public schools. I don't think anybody's disagreeing with that. Oh, okay. 
but mm. but yet you're seeing with you know how to shut me up, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but but you are seeing special places for people to pray in schools. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, and I mean, for Muslims, that. you know, a lot of places are doing that. They're but taking the time to do that it. That doesn't belong in the school. So you are seeing that in schools, yeah, especially but, on the university levels. They get well, universities is a yeah. different thing. But Prayer it, in schools, uh, uh, well, I'm not for that, uh, especially if you got to yeah. set some special standard for this. Uh, no, if you want to pray, you do it at home okay. or in your church, okay. in it, my opinion. It yeah. depends on the prayer. Before a lot of our gatherings, we just had a one in Smith River, a gathering, right. and yeah. we had a Native American said a prayer. Everyone I go to, we say it. We, you know, think, well, our gods might be different. Should we tell everybody this is who you have to pray to? No, absolutely not. If and you that's want to go ahead and their pray, culture. If you want to pray to you know your particular god, whatever it is. Well, sure. That's your, you know, that, and that's fine with it. We cannot, as a society, say you have to do it this way. Correct. And that's where some people are pushed really hard in public places. You can't really push all of those things, and it shouldn't be because. You have a populace that are of different religions, different faiths, different ethnic Or my favorite, background. no religion. Or no religion at all. And you have a lot of them. And that, okay. and that no religion kid feels a little put out when well, everybody you know, else is the, praying. Like, okay. But when the, the, the coach for the football team says, you can come if you want to. Right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, we, I know <laughs> I don't played football. And, and, <laughs> I know. I didn't even, being not a religious person, I didn't think about it. I just joined in the the prayer, the football, whatever. Um, but, and, and go back with the the Pledge of Allegiance. I mean, I said it by memory in grade school, yeah. grammar school. But the older I got, I thought, why did they throw God in They there? threw yeah. that in when I was in the seventh grade. Yeah. I'll never forget it. Not it was ni- it 1957. We were all at an assembly. I was in the seventh grade. <clears throat> and and it was a big deal. They said, we're adding this into the Pledge of Allegiance. And I, and I I couldn't quite believe it at as a seventh grader. I, I I think the reason they added it and it's still there is the fact that when you look at the foundation of the country, and the fact that when they came over here, yeah. God was such a big part of it. Has yeah. the country changed since back then? It has. Oh, mm-hmm. Yes. Considerably, yeah. mm-hmm. but but that's why it's that's there. Why? And, you sure. know, I have no problem saying under God, but when I say God, I mean to me. It's this one, you know, maybe to somebody else, it's their God. Yeah. But it's a pledge of religion to whoever it is. And I think too many times when we talk about God is that we specifically refer to, you know, to me, it's my Father in heaven. Okay. To somebody else, it's going to be somebody different. Yeah. And it's been that way throughout history. To to a lot of people. Yeah. To a lot of people, God is like, I grew up as a Christian scientist and my, my Father always said that God was mother, father, God. So then he said, just look at Genesis. It starts out, we created, a, who's this we? Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're trying to put in our own interpretations mm-hmm. on what that God means. There's been a lot of and, abuses over the years on oh, this. Oh, yeah. Like bringing I God in. You know, we had that's to. That's part of the problem. You, you mentioned Native Americans a couple of times here. I mean, well, we had to make right. them all Christians. Uh, mm, mm-hmm. I lived in Alaska for a long time, and not long before I got there, uh, the BIA used to just come in and take kids because they shouldn't be living as Eskimos with them, make them into white people, uh, and, and a lot of that was in the, in the name of God. That's right. And mm-hmm. I had that discussion uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we had actually talked about that because when I grew up, there was an Indian school where they. Brought him in and forced him to come to our schools, and that's and that and, was normal. And we're, and we not, actually had we're not allowed discussion. not allowed to speak Absolutely. their native language. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, per, that, yeah, that was pretty horrific. Yeah, treatment. it was horrific. Yeah. We are have you, a horrific yeah. history. Are you aware right now, though, in Del Norte County, we actually teach the uh, Yurok language really? from K twelve? Oh yeah, to I high saw school. an article about. We are that. now starting to teach the Talawa language also, I besides Hmong. That's a great idea. You know, in, in, as a, in Alaska, we're doing it, and that's what we're doing. We've been well, doing it for positive. a number of years. Absolutely, it is to that's... teach those cultures. Let people get reinvested in their culture. It's essential. In Alaska, for a long time, the uh, young people, people around my age, they're not young people anymore, were were almost embarrassed by what they called the old ways, and they really weren't. They weren't learning the language or anything. And then there was a 
um, a reimmersion, I guess, in mm -hmm. what um, early eighties, to where they were taking pride, and all the old ladies were teaching the kids how to spread water skins mm -hmm. and things like that, and 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 now they're all learning their languages, and it's changed a whole lot. I think that's great, yeah. especially for the younger ones to to really be prideful of their heritage. Yes, Absolutely. yes, and like Mike said, that Del Norte County with the Yurok, the Talawa, the Kurok, yeah. I yes, they're, other they're tribes. From the, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. my tribe is from the Central California area, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but teaching that culture, it's yes. necessary, and it yes. should be that way. Yeah. That's where we're trying to change Margaret Keating to that. That's really okay, that's, that's awesome. That's, awesome. That's, yeah. that's a very good point. Um, before it, we run out of time too much. I wanted to bring another issue. I thought that we could, uh, co we have come together a little bit, and that's this Ukraine mess and supporting them. That's a lot of government dollars. I feel those dollars are well spent um, because I think Putin and Russia, Putin mostly, is a problem for the world, and I think we should be backing that. Yeah. Now, the part of the Republican Party was against that for a while. It was a small minority. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I was shocked that they were stopping that. Because, but again, because we, for some reason or other, we have to please Putin these days. It, well, it, yeah. that's a weird thing. I mean, we and have, I don't we understand have a that. President Kennedy. But it's weird. I, know. I think he's generally so Republicans leader. and Democrats agree that Putin's a bad deal and Ukraine needs to win that battle or war. This they is do. a I think real, the, the I, issue I, isn't so much that as is what happens to that money where it goes there because we know, you know, we don't have but, the control. But, but military guys. money always, a portion of it gets pissed away. Yeah. Always. <laughs> always. <laughs> and that's the problem. That same thing with nonprofits but, in the United States. Yeah. But money. we can't, we can't take like, the time to, can't take the time to, to ration out bullets to a tank when there's a war going on. This money's going to be wasted and that's just the way it is. People will abscound with it. People, yep. you give a 19 year old a gun, he's going to kill people. Good people. Are, yeah. That's all stuff that happens in wars. You can't War, yeah. you can't sit back and nickel and dime and say, "Oh, but they're going to waste a lot of it." No, but they getting, need it. They need it now. They yeah. need to keep it. Russia needs to be stopped. The I, Ukraine, yeah. Ukraine is disagree. getting our leftover um, equipment. They're uh, they're we're not spending a whole lot of money. We're just sending them leftover yeah. equipment. But billions of dollars. Worth it's, of. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's billions it's, of dollars. Yeah, I don't know that I, I agree with that leftover equipment because we know it is enriching our arms industry. Yeah, well, yeah that's, that's, a, that's, another, that's another reason. <laughs> yeah, but we do need to stop Russia. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things about me, is I, I've got five kids, and one of my kids actually is an international attorney in Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he actually helped write the trade agreements with China. Wow. And the uh, Canadian and Mexican-American treaties. That's cool. Uh, he was chief of staff under the Trump administration for Ambassador Lighthizer. Oh. His was bipartisan because he worked with both of them, uh, both parties for those trade agreements Okay, with it. And so I'm very much aware of a lot of the different great things that are going on and the different issues that you're talking about and how does it affect it. If we're not in war, we have a section of our economic uh, you know, group that is losing money. Yeah. Yeah, okay. the it's, military it's absolutely, industrial complex. Absolutely. And that's in the, one of in the, the past, the military has been given... Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, Ten years ago, the plane was given... Uh, the Air Force was given jets that they didn't even want, but their senator got that contract to get the jets. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's a the lot of ways. Need to military look at. industrial complex. Yeah, the military and industrial. Unfortunately, conflict. when it comes to politics, how many of our politicians go to Washington with you know middle class incomes and then come back millions billionaires? You know, yeah. Yeah. That's the why first they couple like years to stay because, there of the, because of the lobbyists. <laughs> yeah. And, and the that's, lobby industry. That's why I we think need that's, term is that limits. what's keeping these people who know? <laughs> yeah. Trump is dangerous and not good. Is that what's and is that what's keeping sides. them mm -hmm. them so loyal to him? In regard, you know, I saw Bill Barr interviewed uh, the day before yesterday on CNN. It was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. You know, Bill Barr has been 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 complaining about Trump, and Trump's been complaining about Bill Barr, and Bill Barr's there like he's a good old boy, you know. And oh, don't don't believe all that blustering and stuff because there are people that keep him under control. A lot of people voted for him because they thought that the stuff he was saying was just nonsense and he would never really do that. 
And I think there's a lot of people now thinking that he won't really join in with Putin or he won't really. He, he never did. He, that, he's talking all about that Russian redoing... hoax was presented not by him. He's the one that stopped it. That war in Ukraine would not have happened if he was a pre if he was the president. Why do you say I, that? It's just the opposite because they look at Joe Biden, and this is why I get going up and down the road is weak because they don't do anything, whether it's on the southern border or whether it's Ukraine. Well, I, and yeah, I, I, so I again, it depends on what where you're getting news from. Where right? you're getting yes. your information. Okay. And I, look yes. at, I, I yes. listen to CNN. I listen to these different things. I look at all the different ones because it, you know, and then I do some research with it. And so what's really taking place? And, you know, how many times has CNN been caught out on lies? Constantly. Rachel Maddow, constantly. Oh, no, Rachel is... Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. I will and, and defend this, Rachel Maddow. <laughs> and this is why there's so much, you know, problems in the United States is because we have these talking heads on both sides, yep. we, and we don't so, have that true information because the media itself is very left. I cannot even get my name into the San, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Okay, my new paper, but yeah, okay. I cannot even get my name in there because I'm a Republican. <laughs> oh well, yeah. and that, and that's not and, right. And see that, yeah. Okay, but that's it's not also but not it's you, common. Okay, but the media <clears throat> uh, journalism. How has, and I, I'll go Trump and his minions, they've started to make the media the big enemy, fake news. And I just don't see, oh, it's not the same maybe as what it was, but come on, man. That, uh, I, I still think it's an honorable position to try to get the the story told. Well, how many stories are not told correctly that they have to retract? Well, well you just you you just said that, that, that uh, uh, Putin wouldn't go into Ukraine if uh, Trump was president. I, I that's don't believe he would. No, he, that's my he, personal he, he opinion. Uh, I think that's some that's some misinformation, he, right? But Putin he would have helped him. Putin is uh, Trump is saying we'll give him yeah. Ukraine. Do you forget what happened? He took he went in, into Crimea and uh, in 2014, and uh, then he stayed there, and then they and replaced. Who was, pre who was president in 2014? Uh, I think it was uh, still Obama, Obama, wasn't it? Yeah. And then, okay. And then Trump came in, and Trump didn't do one thing to to help. Well, why didn't Obama take care of it then? Well, why didn't the... I the, don't okay, know. So, well, well, this, is, <laughs> this is the thing. We don't know. We don't know where the money is coming yeah. from. We don't know where it's going. Well, yeah, you're right. We don't know. True. There's a lot we don't know. <laughs> yeah. There is and, a lot we And don't I did know. think, uh, it, let me just say this, that... That was a mistake that Obama made, and I, that really bothered me a lot about mm. the, the about the crime. Crimea. I still yeah. love the guy. I think he was a great president, but nobody's perfect, and that was a mistake that he <laughs> made. So, and then and then um, the um, press, the former president of Ukraine, was uh, just a Putin puppet, and they ousted him finally. Um, and then, but then Putin decided that he could just walk over the Ukraine. I don't know how he did it. I really don't. Yeah, and I, I, I do question our own military. I know this is a touchy one, but it's like they can only go so far. I don't. I was ready for them to go right in and take care of help help Ukraine as best. Oh as no! And you got no, the old no, boots no. on the ground. We no, we would have started the World War Three if well, we'd done that. I don't know, man. I, I, I think Putin is that dangerous. Yeah. He's very dangerous. He, yeah, but we we've it, let him do this for how many years now? How long is this? I don't know. Trump says he'll end the war the first day he's in office. Well, see, that's sure. that bluster. What's that's yeah, what bluster. Is, what, what, do you have any idea what his plan might be other than to <laughs> to to give in to Putin? That, that's the uh, only way. I, I don't believe like. he will. No, no. I, well, well, I I think that we we have shown on an international level that we're weak. Okay, uh, our international policies uh, are showing that we won't stand up to it. I've been pleased that they have with uh, the Iranian attacks on Israel, mm -hmm. that we did go in to stop that. Yeah. Agree 100%. Okay. I, right? and I, I thought that was completely appropriate to do that. Yeah. Um, I don't believe that, you know, I'm what I'm concerned with, too, is... The China and North Korea. Oh, oh, there are this, this is a problem. Are yeah. you concerned with North Korea attacking us, or I, I, I think they're more dangerous than China. 
Uh, what what would when they keep saying he has a missile that will read Oregon? Uh, so what? He can't. There's no way in the world he can shoot that missile. There's no way in the world that North Korea could attack us. Wait, wait, wait. No, why? Uh, I, I, why? Why? I, why? 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 Because they're one of the poorest countries in the world, and as Trump said, we have shinier, newer, shinier buttons. I mean, we, the country <laughs> could be vaporized overnight, practically. They have no no ability to sustain any kind of war. They can't even feed their own people. Well, I know that. North and they, and they, they, he's blustering like that because now he gets the president of the United States to come visit him, and he's just a little pissant. He's nothing at all. But and then and then then he cons Trump into thinking, well, I've done away with my nuclear weapons things by blowing up an old facility, and in fact, he's uh, no, bigger now true. than he ever was. Well, now, Trump, now... Trump is saying he's a strong leader, and we're, we're friends. All right. we. I mean, I don't know enough about this topic to even discuss it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm going to shut up. China, China's a big I, danger. I, my son was just in South Korea talking with the president uh, well. a couple of weeks ago. President of South Korea? Yes, and oh. also in uh, Taiwan. Oh. He, there's, whew, there's another he does, little... He does, like say, he was the one that did the trade agreements, yeah. and he's an international attorney, so he has those opportunities to, to discuss these things. You have great insight then in so, all of that. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm impressed. So there are those things. But, you know, the real issue, though, that, that we need to look at is, okay, yeah, we have these dangers from different areas, but how are we going to save our problems and our advice is how are we going to start talking to each other? Yeah. That's, That's right. the real key is how are we going to start doing it here? I think one I of think the— if, uh, and, oh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. If we would get rid of some of the radical Republicans that are some uh, or the radical well, left. Now, now wait. What radical That's, left? Show me an, a radical left. Uh, you can we take only a have look two down minutes. At Humboldt. Yeah. <laughs> you can take a look at Humboldt right now. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, all those. That's part of the radical left. Uh, I don't, AOC I don't know is part of that radical left. But... You, you have those. But th but that's not, you know, you're always going to have those radicals. Yeah. I don't care whether you're left or right. You're always going to have them. What we need but to do never is get, get the people in between to talk to each other and discuss the it. Reason... And then elect those people that will start working for the people and not for themselves. True. And okay, I we have a minute and a half, so everybody start wrapping up. Okay, I'm going to wrap up with the reason we got here. I, and in my opinion, the reason is that we have all become clickbait on social media to listen to oh, the only one side of an issue. And if we click on something, we'll get the same thing, same thing. If you, if you feed on something radical, you're going to regurgitate radical. And that's what has happened to each side. And they've been feeding on the the clickbaits that come into their side. And, they don't and, hear anything else. Right. And I disagree, Mike, in a way. Yeah, there's radicals on both sides. I think it's apples and oranges uh, with the radical right, with the Proud Boys and the whole thing in January 6th. Um, but that's my opinion. But I do want to thank you again for coming into the... We're not the enemy territory. No. You're the first one that <laughs> was able to come in and join us. And I hope you join us again. I will oh, thank you to. for showing I'd us. I'd love yeah. to. I yeah, I, I think we're, we're, not, we're, well, we're 30 seconds left, and we didn't even touch this topic, really. Well, there's a lot more to it. Yeah, we should have another show. Yeah, sounds okay. good to me. And thank you for being here, Mike. Oh, yeah. not a problem. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Okay, great. You know, I do it because I go against the grain a lot of things. And one thing you'll be hearing, too, is up. I don't yeah. like the turbines out on our ocean either. Oh, yeah. Uh oh okay. Uh -oh. That's another show. Th there, there, that is that's another, another show. show. <laughs> and the, and the jury okay, is definitely out on that. We're wrapping oh. up. Okay. Adios. Tune in next time. Next Sorry. week. KCIW. Next week.